Coming up in today's show, Elki shows us how to set up a Kamado Joe ceramic grill for two-zone cooking. Neil takes inspiration from holidays in Greece and makes lamb burgers topped with tzatziki and feta cheese. Our special guest is Ben Forte, Global Marketing Manager at Kamado Joe. In Dish of the Week, Elki shows us how to cook a whole gurnard. And we go on a journey around the barbecue community to take a look at what you've been cooking. Welcome to the Lockdown Barbecue Show. Welcome to the 15th Lockdown Barbecue Show, and we hope you've had a really good week. Now, Elke, we've had record temperatures in the UK over the last seven days. We have indeed, yeah, and I've been absolutely melting, but luckily I took Thursday and Friday off of work. I took my little nipper, nine-month-old Joe, down to the beach on Friday, and he absolutely loved it, so that was good. Um, not done as much cooking as you probably expect, although yesterday I did venture into the shack and I cooked a pepper-crusted beef fillet, which was absolutely amazing, but it was about 38 to 40 degrees in the shack, and I was melting, so yeah, I couldn't stay in there too long. Uh, the sun's still shining now, you can probably tell by the, uh, the sunshine on my face, but um, you know, we, we deal with it. What about you? What have you been up to? We've had a really good week. I think my favourite cook was Chinese-style chicken thighs, which we had with a lovely stir-fry and Singapore noodles which was absolutely great. Now we've got an action-packed show this week and we're going to start off with Elkie's how-to. In this week's how-to we take a look at how to set up the Kamado Joe ceramic grill for two-zone cooking. I've shown you in the previous episode how we set up the standard kettle grill for two-zone cooking. I'm now going to show you how we would do that on the Kamado Joe ceramic grill using two-zone cooking. So again, you've got your high heat, your sear zone, and you've got your indirect zone to finish cooking off anything that you don't want over the intense heat. So let's show you how. So this is our Kamado Joe firebox. You'll see that we've got the charcoal basket in there. We've got the divide and conquer cooking system. This enables us to use half moon, grates, heat deflectors and accessories. So we're going to go ahead get some charcoal in there, get the fire lit, and show you how we set up for two zone cooking. So we've just poured in some homework charcoal, over mainly on one side, and we're just gonna pop a couple of fire lighters in there, just to get this going, get those lit. And we're just gonna leave that now for 10 minutes until we get a nice little fire on the go. So we've got ourselves a nice little fire on the go here. Now we're just gonna take one of these half moon deflector plates and we're just gonna pop it over this side. I know we haven't got the fire over this side, but in case any hot coals or anything do fall over this side, it's gonna protect us from any direct heat over here on the indirect side. And sometimes you will fill the fire basket rather than just have it to one side. So this again is gonna protect you from the direct heat over your indirect side. So like I said, we're just gonna pop heat deflector there and then one of the half moon grill grates we're just going to pop over the direct heat hot zone and then our indirect zone again one of the half moon grill grates over on this side so you can see there we've got a hot zone and we've got a cooler zone it really is as simple as that hot zone cool zone we're going to pop the lid down bring this up the temperature i've shown you before how to use the vents to bring it up the temperature we're going to open up the bottom vent, we're going to open up the top vent all the way. We're going to dial this in. You may want to chuck some wood, uh, wood chunk on there just to give you a bit of smoke. But that is essentially how we set the Kamado Joe up for two-zone cooking. So that was my very simple how-to on how to set up your Kamado Joe ceramic grill for two-zone cooking. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you again next week. Elki, the divide and conquer system really helps with two-zone cooking. Oh, it really does. And there's so many different configurations, endless possibilities. There really isn't much that you can't cook in a Kamado Joe. Now, Elkie, would you like to introduce our special guest for this show? Yeah, so in keeping with the Kamado Joe theme, we've got barbecue community legend Ben Forte from Kamado Joe. Ben, welcome to the Lockdown Barbecue Show. On a personal level, how have you... <laughs> 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 i go again. Let's, <laughs> Let's go again. Ben, welcome to Lockdown Barbecue Show. On a personal level, how have you found the last few months? Hey, mate. Yes, great to be on the show. I've been watching every episode and loving it. So well done, guys. He's doing a great job here. And I think without this show, lockdown could have been a lot harder for me. So, yeah, it's been, it's been very different, hasn't it? This, uh, this year, I probably would have been out doing events like, all over Europe, 
all over the world, but definitely in the UK as well. So to have had all of that cancelled has been a big shocker, but barbecue's done well. We've been, it's been a great time to be at home and build your collection and build your recipes and make some great content. So I've made the most of it, but it's definitely been a challenge. You've been knocking up a bit of an outdoor space, haven't you? Yeah, and I've been wanting to do that for years. Like people keep saying to me, oh, uh, look, it's looking really great. Um, I, w- I wish I could do it. I was like, I've been actually been trying to get around to doing this for about 10 years now. And I just didn't even want to attempt building at my old house because I knew that I wanted to move at some point. And I was like, do I build it? Then I going to dismantle it or do I leave it there? So in the end, I just did nothing and uh, waited till I got here. And I've built this nice big wooden pergola. Um, that's a one for debate, isn't it? Pergola. Pagoda. 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 Pergola. <laughs> What's your preference? I think I think uh, pergola is, yeah. is what I would say, but then I'm I'm just a Portsmouth, you know. Apparently, I've got a Cockney accent, and I don't know what I'm saying half the time. So, <laughs> for all businesses, lockdown's been really tough. How have Commando Joe adapted? Yeah, I think luckily for us, a lot of the a lot of us work remotely and all around the world in different locations. So we're we're very used to working well as a team in remote locations. So. That's been great, but the demand's just been huge. So I think Kamado Joe's guilty of its own success. We've built so great and built up so big, but no one ever anticipated what was on the horizon here. So yeah, it's been a big challenge, but I think it's, it's been good. Like I work from home full time anyway, so things have not changed so much for me apart from that travel aspect of the job and getting out and hanging out with people, which is really great i love being with people and building those relationships face to face so it has been a it's been a tricky time how have you had to kind of adapt your approach to marketing i mean obviously it's a bit more of an online presence now is it is it going to stay that way we've always been pretty good to be honest at being a bit more cutting edge and being out there and doing fresh and new things so i think the fact that when lockdown very first began and we straight away launched kj live and we did that big of live event which you were part of Elke around the world where we had different events happening every hour and it was complete carnage and I was completely knackered by the end of the day but it was amazing and that was like right at the beginning it seems so long ago now and you've seen so many zoom events and live events and all these things have just become the normal now but when we did that one straight away at the beginning that was pretty fresh and inventive to be like oh wow we're going live from all around the world We've got the fire squad cooking up all sorts of different dishes. And that was, that was a real great start to the lockdown time for me. And you, you, you've got more of those plans? Yeah, like KG Live started off as a one-off event, but then really became a platform for more and more events. So we've got stuff planned throughout the rest of the year for doing different KJ Live events, monthly, bi-monthly, maybe even a Christmas special, who knows? Ben, I've mainly ever cooked really on kettle grills. Can you tell me the difference between a kettle grill and a ceramic Kamado? In terms of like the grill space, they're on a par almost with a similar sort of style space. But the real beauty and advantage of ceramic is because it's made of that like inch thick ceramic that adds so much more efficiency. So when you're filling up with charcoal, you're not having to keep pumping more and more coal to keep your heat. Once that ceramic's hot, it's going to hold in the heat for a lot longer. And also, whilst it's doing that, it's retaining moisture as well. With a metal barbecue, it's kind of drawing the moisture out and evaporating when it hits on it. With ceramic, that's keeping the moisture locked inside of the grill, keeping it, keeping your meats moister. <laughs> I saw some old marketing material from Kamado Joe. One of their taglines was moister meats. I'm glad we don't have that one anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah and then then i guess on top of that it's like longevity that is they're built to last a lifetime so efficiency versatility and longevity that's my key things as to what ceramics have got ben can you talk us through the product range we start from the joe jr which is our smallest smallest grill we call that the that's the portable grill so it's portable as long as you've got some of these uh no elkie's uh Got some muscles there, so he can probably lift himself up, uh, Joe Jr. Um, but yeah, I love, I do love taking it out. It's good for camping, but it's also just good as a second grill. And you can actually do everything with it, to be honest. You can do your whole 
spatchcock chicken. You can do your roast chicken. You can do a little pulled pork. I always say to most people, it is the perfect little grill. If there's only two of you maybe in the family, you can get the advantages of a ceramic. It doesn't quite have all of the accessories with like rotisseries and things like that, but it's such a great little cool grill to either start off your world in Kamado cooking or as a extra grill if you need a bit more, a little bit more space. I quite like doing some low and slow in my classic and then just bring it across for a quick sear on the junior. And then we step up to the classic size, which is the more family size. You, your average like four to six people in a family that cook in your whole roast dinners, you're going to be at a that's one of the differences. Go back to the junior to the classic is going to be, I always say you could do like your whole roast dinner in a classic, whereas maybe with the junior, you're just going to do your meat and then you might do your potatoes in the oven. Whereas with the classic, now you've got enough space for the whole meal. And it also adds that versatility of now you've got the divide and conquer system. So you can have a cast iron griddle on one side, a soapstone on the other side, you can go to different levels. There's a lot more flexibility when you move up to the classic range. And then there's classic one, two, three. There's uh, an expanse of different features in them from airlift hinges to different top vents to the classic three now has a slow roller, which is pretty cool. I, it's one of my most exciting things that came out when we released the... Uh, three series was that slow roller where we developed it with harvard university to create hyperbolic airflow so the smoke spirals around inside so it's like punching flavor into your food as it's coming up before it leaves so it doesn't just go ah just passing by it's a punch punch have a bit of flavor off i go i definitely find the uh, slow roller makes a difference as well but i also like the extra airflow that it gives you the extra clearance between your kind of charcoal basket and the yeah. heat reflectors, um, I think, makes a big difference as well. But yeah, like you said, I think food just does taste better using the slow roller. And that's, you know, that's not yeah. just me bigging up Kamado Joe. I think it yeah. does. Yeah, it does. And we we generally have blind tested people and said which tastes better. And it has, it's one. It's, it's definitely a winner. <laughs> then you move and, up to um, Big Joe size, which is all the same features, but you've just got more capacity. And then Pro Joe steps it up again to the real... I always say it's a bit like the gold Apple Watch of barbecues. It's uh, it's just bigger and better. <laughs> what, what's your favourite if you had to pick one? I'd probably just to go for a classic. And I'll go classic free because I want that slow roller feature. And I love the cart as well. It's like muscles holding up the grill there. While we're on the subject of uh, Kamado Joes and grills, have you got any, um, any secret plans for uh, any new product ranges coming on the horizon where, where we can say we heard it here first? No. <laughs> <laughs> but you know us we're, we're we've always got new plans we're always two years ahead of the game so we we know exactly where we're going we've got new products to come out when's this podcast uh, not podcast when's this video going out next week yeah can't tell you then. <laughs> <laughs> three weeks <laughs> <laughs> there'll be something there'll be something for you we, we always make our new product announcements around the september time so yeah, we'll give you some exclusives when it's ready. Ben, over the last couple of years, Kamado Joe have been really successful. What do you put down to the success? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, you did say a couple of years. I've been here a couple of years, so maybe it is me. No, I don't know. It's, I think we're, it's down to the fact that we're just innovative and we're always working on the next best thing and the best way to enhance barbecue. We don't release an accessory for the point of an accessory it's about enhancing the experience and making it better so i think that's been the big success and then having such an enthusiastic community of users uh, all our joes all around the world people like elki um our fire squad like all of these people are just so great and so good to involve with the brand and help us to keep building it as well as the Commando Joe range, you've um, master built have been making a bit of a splash in the UK market over the year or so, haven't they? With the uh, with the gravity fed um, smoker, yeah. can you tell us a bit more about that one? Yeah, that that was really exciting to me. I think like, master built came is huge in the US. It's one of the biggest brands out there. It's the biggest vertical smoker brand that exists in the US. Um, so when we decided we're going to bring it over to Europe. And we're going to bring the smokers over. But of course, we had this new rumbling of the Gravity Series product, which is really, really exciting. It's got all the kind of 
benefits and features that you would have from having like a simple gas barbecue or a pellet grill, but it's charcoal fueled, which is the key really. That's what everyone wants. Everyone wants real charcoal, real flavor. So it's giving you all of that. You fill this big hopper up on the side of it, fill it with charcoal, light it at the bottom and then set your dials to whatever temperature you want and it does it for you. So it's uh, all the flavor and fun of charcoal, but the ease of gas or pellet. Is it the pellet grill killer? You said it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's got the potential, hasn't it? Like, there's all, all different fuel sources are obviously great. Like there's different ways, different fun. I just love being outside cooking. That's the key for me. Like I'm not going to not hang out with you if you cook on pellet. Like we'll, we'll still talk, but maybe you won't come around my house. Um, no, I'm joking. <laughs> No, it's good. No, I'm I'm cool. I just love barbecue, whatever the fuel source. But charcoal has always been my favourite. And on the Commando Joe, what are your favourite things to cook? Oh, it's a tough one, isn't it? That's like the million dollar question. You always get asked it. But I, I usually do actually just pick tri-tip steak because I absolutely love it, and I feel like it really showcases the grill so well. Um, doing a reverse sear on a tri-tip steak has got to be my favorite way to cook a steak. Like cooking it low and slow till it's about 50 degrees centigrade internal temperature. And then just crank up the grill as hot as you can get it and just give it a quick sear for like one minute. And then let it rest. Slice in, put a bit of chimichurri on it. Oh, yeah, that's for me. <laughs> You're talking my language. <laughs> uh, today I just had a... Simple hot dog. I cook. I like to cook on it every day. I got sent some like big beef hot dogs. I was hoping I was going to be sat outside grilling now with you, with you guys, but rather inconveniently, my neighbours decided to cut their hedge right now. Ben, you produce a very successful podcast called United Q Barbecue Podcast. Can you tell us something about it? Me and Dan, my like, co-host of the podcast, set out to create a new one. We'd heard like one podcast did in barbecue in the US. Uh, it was called like man meat barbecue and I thought we loved it we thought it was really great um, but we knew there was so many cool things happening in the UK with the barbecue scene it was really growing and we really wanted to showcase what all these great companies were producing what all these great barbecue teams were achieving and we set out just to share the the love of British barbecue and then it, it started to grow beyond that we picked up a nice followership pretty quickly to be honest and then um, within a few months we were venturing outside of uh, the UK to find even more guests and keep keep this beast building and I think last year I had just over two million listens to the podcast which we thought was awesome for just like a fun thing that we just knocked up in a few minutes all you need is a microphone Skype and click record and away you go um, so yeah you can check out United Q we've uh, been a bit We've been like the opposite to you guys. In lockdown, we got a bit lazy and didn't really do much with it. But <laughs> um, yeah, previously we'd recorded up, there's probably nearly 160 episodes, I think, so there's plenty of hours for people to catch up on. I think my favourite one is the uh, one where you had the smoke and elk on. Oh yeah, that was a good one. I actually wasn't there, was I? No, it's, it's, uh, it's me and Dan. I don't know where you were, but you know, I obviously wasn't important enough for you to be on there as well. Yeah, now you're a big deal, we'll get you back on. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, it was a. It was actually to this day. I think it's been the only podcast that Dan's recorded on his own without me. So oh, I'm, so I'm special. Yeah, it's a real exclusive that one. <laughs> so um, obviously you've got the podcast. Any other projects that you're kind of working on for the future? That's one of my like taglines. I think on my website is like I've always got a lot of projects on the go. <laughs> it's uh, so many things I'm always working on and coming to fruition on. I think this year the whole. COVID stuff's really held up some of these things like where some people have really benefited from it like some of my big projects I was planning just haven't been able to go ahead this year with not being able to go and record certain things and get involved in different bits so yeah there's there's new books on the horizon new video series coming out there's all sorts of bits and pieces but it's all a bit early days yet um I really want to see my uh my barbecue Christmas cookbook have a resurgence it was a it was a great little piece that we put together a few years ago and I think like learning what I've learned over the last few years is definitely a load more stuff that could be added to that book and recreate the new alfresco Christmas. 
2021, how do you see the barbecue scene developing? What's been the biggest trends? Like this year, I think it's just been just so good around like charcoal becoming so important to people. I think that like provenance, people knowing where their food comes from, where their fuel comes from and being able to use it and make the most of it. I think those things continue to grow, but you see a big increase. I think I'm guilty of it as well myself. And I see a lot in the US is a lot of kind of cooking over flat plates, like griddle type cooking. Like if, I see like that really growing, that chapa style where you're smashing burgers onto big flat surfaces. Like that's becoming a quite a hip in trend. So I, I see like more of that sort of thing. But I think just versatility, isn't it? That's the key is more and more people now are realizing you don't just have to cook burgers and sausages and the adventurous might do a kebab. Like now, now we're seeing people realize, oh, wow, this is just an oven and I can cook anything I can cook in an oven or on a grill. So I think that's the biggest trends we're going to see is this year's really built. There's been so many people getting involved that perhaps never knew about barbecue at this level before. And next year, we're going to see everyone really up in their game and starting to produce some amazing, amazing things. I agree. I completely agree. I mean, you obviously, like you said, people are seeing it more and more, cooking with the lid down. All the accessories are now becoming available. And, and you know, you're seeing a lot of hot plates, a lot of planches and that kind of stuff. And, and it's just been good to see people cooking, you know, more than, you know, 10, 20 times over the summer uh, rather than just, uh, they're now going out all year round, you know, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they're doing their dinner outside. And yeah, I think it's brilliant to see. Yeah. Yeah, and you're, you're so right. It's just seeing all those different things happening and seeing people doing it multiple times. That's the key, isn't it? Like you used to see someone pop up, look what I've done. But now you're seeing, look what I did for breakfast. Look what I did for lunch. Look what I did for dinner. <laughs> ben, thank you so much for being a brilliant guest on the Lockdown Barbecue Show. No worries. Thanks for having me, guys. It's been awesome. And keep up the great work. I've been loving the show. Cheers, Ben. Nice one. A big thank you to Ben. Now, Elky, Ben's got such a great vision for Kamado Joe. Do you think we're going to get any exclusive stories from him? Um, I will certainly keep at him and try and get the odd snippet here and there, so watch this space. But I do have some news. Um, this landed on my doorstep last week. It's the Barbecue Magazine. The editor is Marcus Bowden, who we've had on the show previously. It's packed full of great features, so you can subscribe online, go and check it out. Now it's time for my dish of the week. This week's dish of the week is seared and roasted Gurnard with some roasted cherry tomatoes. It's going to be a good one. So Gurnard might not seem like the most fashionable fish, the most popular fish, but it is a damn tasty fish. Now this was often seen in the past as a byproduct of the fishing industry, but it's such a great sustainable fish and it's having a bit of a renaissance thanks to popular chefs and restaurants giving this a go, bigging it up, and I'm going to try and do my best and create a fantastic dish for Dish of the Week. So I have one Gurnard here from Regal Fish Supplies that I've gutted and cleaned. You can get your fishmongers to do this for you, of course. There's no scaling required. And all I'm gonna do with this is just in the cavity, we're just gonna pop a bit of garlic and a couple of limes. We're just gonna sit in there. And that's what we're gonna do on the underneath. Now we're gonna flip that over and I'm just gonna gently score the skin and the flesh just because I want to get a little bit more flavour in there. We're just going to be using a bit of oil and salt we're going to pack into there. But we're just going to put some cuts into the skin, through the flesh, just like so. And same on the other side. So there we go. And now, just a bit of rapeseed oil, just going to drizzle over the fish. This fish we started off nice and dry, we packed it dry. Don't want the skin to stick when we sear it. So a bit of oil, get it in where we just made those incisions as well. And then we're going to go in with some salt. Lightly salt, one side, making sure you get it all over the skin and in those incisions. A little bit in the belly won't hurt. And again, on the other side, just salt that skin and make sure you get it into those incisions that we just made. So that's the only preparation we're going to do with this fish. I'm going to take you over to the Kamado Joe Classic 3 where we set up for two zone cooking. We're going to give this a sear. We're going to finish it off in a pan with some cherry tomatoes. We're going to serve it with some boiled herby potatoes. 
it's going to be a good one. So here's how we set up on the Commander Joe Classic 3, two zone cooking. We've got the sear side down here where we're going to give the fish a quick sear. Then up here, I've got a pan that's preheating. We're going to pop the fish in here once it's seared with some butter, with some cherry tomatoes and some other goodies. So let's go ahead and get that fish on there. So into the pan we've got some butter, cherry tomatoes, we've added a pinch of salt, a pinch of pepper and a tiny pinch of chilli flakes. So just before we close the lid down, let that roast, we're going to go in with some new potatoes. So we're just going to pop this out of the way, we're going to pop the new potatoes down on the direct side over that direct heat to boil and the fish back over the indirect side and the lid back down. So 10 minutes into the cook and we're just going to pop the lid up. I'm just going to start spooning some of this lovely butter over the fish just to keep it nice and moist. Get that lovely flavour of the garlic and the lime will have seeped out into this as well. Chilli flakes, the salt, the pepper. So just get that all over, basting the fish. And we're going to do this every few minutes now until the fish hits 63 internal temperature. So we've drained the potatoes. We're just gonna go in with those lovely juices. Little touch of oregano, little touch of thyme. That was my dish of the week, seared and roasted gurnard with roasted cherry tomatoes and herb and buttered new potatoes. Smells absolutely delicious. I really hope you'll give this a go. Like I said, Gurnard is an often overlooked fish. It's cheap, it's sustainable, it's delicious. Let's go in and just have a taste. Lovely flaky flesh. That is tasty, really tasty. Nice firm flesh. That is bloody delicious. We've got the lovely smoky flavour from charring it directly over the coals and then we finish it off by roasting it to a perfect 63 degrees. The flesh is flaky but moist and it's damn delicious. So that was my dish of the week. I do hope that you'll give this fish a try and I'll see you again next week. Elkie, I've never cooked a gurnard before. It looked lovely. Yeah, it's actually really tasty, Neil. Um, often thought of as a byproduct of the fishing industry. It's making a bit of a renaissance thanks to some top chefs and restaurants. I mean, it's a very sustainable fish and it's delicious. So I'd advise you to give it a go. I think I will do. Now it's time for What's Cooking. Now this is the second week of my What's Cooking competition. Elkie, which was your favourite dish?
uh, this was by far the toughest one to call. Uh, I mean, it's week two into the competition and they're just getting better and better. I mean, you had the octopus, which looked amazing, that we've done on the show. You had the fish cake that we've done on the show. The chicken shawarma just looked mouth-watering. You, you had the Indian feast all cooked on the Cadai Fireball. So they're all good contenders. But in the end, I went with Stoke and Smoke Barbecue with the porchetta that was cooked on a rotisserie. It looked absolutely amazing. So that's two in the bag, two to go, ready for the draw at the end of the month for the firmer pen. So keep those photos coming in. Now, Neil, you've been doing a bit of work on your garden, haven't you? Should we take a look? The weather over the past week has been absolutely glorious and it's been fantastic for the vegetable patch. Now, the good news is preparations for my barbecue shack have begun and over the last few days, we've cleared this area here of garden waste. The next job is to take the tree down behind me and once the tree's down, we'll have an area of about four meters by five meters, which is gonna be a great space for the barbecue shack. Now, this week, I'm gonna cook lamb burgers with tzatziki and an onion pickle and serve with feta cheese. To make these delicious burgers, you'll need 500 grams of lamb mince, one teaspoon of salt, ground pepper, smoked paprika, and cumin seeds, and half a teaspoon of ground coriander. Add all the ingredients to the mince and mix well. Divide the mixture into four balls and then shape into patties and put to one side. I love tzatziki, and to make this, you will need four tablespoons of Greek yogurt, a small bunch of fresh mint finely chopped, and a quarter of cucumber sliced. Additionally, you'll need a teaspoon of dill and half a teaspoon of both salt and pepper. Mix all the ingredients together and give it a good stir and put it in the fridge until you need it. The pickled onion is very easy to make. Slice a red onion and put it into two tablespoons of red wine vinegar and give it a stir. Prepare the barbecue for direct cooking and heat to a medium to hot temperature. Next, crumble 100 grams of feta cheese and now it's time to cook the burgers. Place the four lamb burgers directly over the hot charcoal and put the lid on the barbecue. After four minutes, turn all of the burgers and cook for a further three minutes. The burgers are good to go when they reach 70 degrees C. Place them in the indirect heat zone of the barbecue and gather everything together. Top your lamb burgers with tzatziki, pickled onions and feta cheese and serve in a bun of your choice. Enjoy! Now it's time to get back to planning the barbecue shack. Happy days. Elky, the lamb burgers are lovely. All I need to do now is get on and design the shack. Yeah, but, but there's no shortage of inspiration, is there, from guests on the channel, from my shack. If you need any pointers, just give me a shout. That's good to know. Now, Elky, who's our special guest next week? Next week, we're heading to Mississippi and we have Malcolm Reed from How to Barbecue Right. He's got his own line of rubs, he has the website, he has a competition barbecue team, and he has a YouTube channel with over a million subscribers. There's just a few more than we have at the moment, Elky. Now, that's about it for this show. Thanks for watching. A big thank you to Commando Joe, our program sponsor, and we'll see you next week. And again, a huge thanks from me, guys. Keep those fires burning, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>